Reyes of the English Department, also all of the online journal Critica Cultura. Uh, we're happy to let you know that Critica Cultura has recently been uh, approved for indexing at Scopus. Uh, Scopus is the largest database of uh, sources, uh, uh, which is the one used by uh, the World the Times rank, whatever you call that, best for world ranking. No? It used to be ISI function that they, they used as a basis for ranking, now it's Scopus, and we're happy to, to be indexing there now. Okay. Well, as you know, Critica Cultura, uh, the journal has a kind of companion uh, lecture series called Critica Cultura Lecture Series. And uh, today is the how many, Francis, how many have we had this year? Third, third for this year. Uh, this quarter, this quarter at least, no? We, we had quite a bit uh, last year, uh, like David Lloyd. We had David Lloyd last year, you know, that obviously we're still studying California. Today, we're very honored to, to have uh, as guest um, Servando Halili, also known as Ben Halili. Okay, he's um, here, as you know. Um, there's quite a bit you can say about this man, but the first, first, uh, first thing I'd like to say about him is, uh, is one that's closest to me, I mean, closest to my heart, and that he was one of the pioneer graduates of the master's program in literary and cultural studies. And that program was very new, and there were very few students, and uh, Ben was one of them. Of course, he was not an ordinary graduate. He was an outstanding graduate, writing a very uh, important uh, thesis um, and using very advanced, uh, or what we call them as uh, cutting edge methodologies in cultural studies. He has since uh, moved, uh, what had moved soon after graduation, well, soon after graduation, or a couple of years, three years after graduation. He began his doctoral work uh, in the United States, uh, uh, finishing with a PhD exactly in American cultural studies, okay? Um, and producing a book entitled Iconography of the New Empire, Race and Gender Images and the American Colonization of the Philippines, uh, published in 2006 by the University of the Philippines. Uh, ben really continues to teach at the Ateneo de Zamblanga, where he's been there for how long, Ben? Eh? <laughs> 19 years. 19 years, that's a lot of time, <laughs> right? And Father, does he have a loyalty? Father Roy, it's high. <laughs> does he have a medal now? <laughs> for staying too long there, right? And he is now uh, very busy doing research, as usual, uh, particularly now on missionary narratives and photographs. Right. He is in fact uh, scheduled uh, to leave for the U.S. on Fulbright uh, to continue research on this. Right. And but for now, uh, we're happy to just happy to have him talk about the uh, the, the research uh, that he's been working, he's been doing for a number of years now, and he has lots of visuals for us. Right. This is very nice. Okay. So without much ado, uh, Ben Hanley. Good afternoon. Um, before we start, I would like to acknowledge Father Croitz, my boss then, and my friend now. <laughs> well, my friend then, <laughs> also. <laughs> also. Okay. I will be talking about uh, ideography of the new empire. Uh, this is a this is the book that I wrote uh, that was published two years ago. Um, but uh, before that, uh, let me tell you something about myself first. I'm Ben Halili. I graduated from from Bowling Green then, from uh, Bowling Green, then before that from Ateneo, when I still had more hair. And, uh, and this building was not yet around. So when I got into this hall, 
this afternoon, I was kind of scared because I thought I was going to teach chemistry. <laughs> I'm really thankful. Okay. Um, I, will, I want to talk about um, cultural studies and how it can be used to study foreign relations. I have an MA in literature, and it's and from that degree I learned cultural studies. Mommy Lu was my teacher then. It give, I, during that time, I, I thought cultural studies can only be used to study lit. Then when I went on for my PhD, I found out that cultural studies can be studied, uh, can be used rather to study other things. Uh, let me start with this. You're still familiar with that incident in the U.S., right? When the plane crashed to the Hudson River. And some time ago, I got a, an email from a relative and the title is what broke down the plane in Hudson River. And this is the reason. Okay, it's... What are those? Huh? Okay. Well, what can you say about this picture? It's two what? Well, dots or leaves or... But what's different? What's so peculiar, peculiar about those two things there? Meto urban, no? So, what does it say? Yes. Right? Favorite stops. Right? And, and you know, right? Um, how do you know they are terrorists? Because I'm a terrorist, right? And that's it. Yes, you're right. It's stereotyping. But this is something that has been going on for the past so many years. It's nothing new, right? Um, Special. Uh, now, after 9/11, uh, Race has is, has become has well it's still a major issue now, but I think the issue was resurrected after 9/11. The people become suspicious of anybody who looks Arab and anybody who looks uh, who has a turban, etc., etc. So it is from this picture that I want to take off to talk about foreign foreign relations to cultural studies. I had a big problem on how to marry the two of them. But it was a success. That's chapter one of my book, actually. First, uh, this is why. Well, something is wrong. Anyway, yes. and I, of course, basically, I am from Ateneo de San Juan University. It's not, not, the last time I gave a talk here, I was introduced as a faculty member of Ateneo de Manila in San Juan. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, okay. So I've been able to some Wang University and public appointments are former president, so I'm thankful that he is there. Um, okay. My 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 curiosity in studying foreign relations, cultural studies, started with Melvin Leffler. Okay, Melvin Leffler is a he's a diplomatic historian. And for a time, it appeared that the study of foreign relations and diplomatic history is untouched by current theories. But in his essay, New Approaches, Interpretations, and Perspective Reconfigurations, he talks about, he advocates rather for other ways of studying foreign relations. He advocates for the honing and re reconfiguring of old interpretations and assimilating new approaches. And for him, the these the hottest approaches are and topics are those relate that relate to gender, culture, and language. So when you say gender, culture, and language, you now see a window of opportunity of using cultural studies in studying foreign relations. Because at first, when you say cultural studies, we talk about literature. Right? You talk about and, and foreign 